I am just super pumped that you're here today. Have you ever had an arrow go seesawing like this through the air when you've shot your bow? Well, I'm gonna help you today. Let's get to the point. Here's the deal, an arrow that's not flying true and straight is annoying and can hit inconsistently. And if you've had an arrow seesaw up and down, that is because your knocking point is off. If your arrow is going side to side, that is because your spine or your arrow point is off. We'll cover the second one later on today. We're gonna talk about how high and how to adjust your knocking point. The reason a knocking point can be off is for multiple reasons, because you could set it correctly at one point and then it get off eventually. And how does that happen? Well, if you've got a Flemish twist string, your string could stretch out, especially if it's not pre-stretched, over time. And when that stretches out over time, you're gonna twist up that string to make your brace height correct again. And once you finally make your brace height correct again, well, you just adjusted that knocking point and then all of a sudden your arrow could be seesawing and you're like, what the heck, my bow is tuned. You might need to adjust that again. So I like to start with a knocking point a quarter inch above the arrow shelf. How do I measure that? <sighs> Simple, use one of these nifty T square bow, bow squares. Use one of these bow squares. It's really nice because it clips onto your string you can line it up, and then you've got your exact marks. There's another airplane. This is like literally on the Air Force base while they're like just right there. And so they're like, this is super cool because it gives you the exact height of your air rest. And from there, I like to start up a quarter inch. But how, how should you set your knocking point? Because if you tie a knock on or if you use a brass little knuckle, I don't know what those are called, they're kind of hard to adjust. So my suggestion is literally to use some duct tape. Duct tape strong enough, it's not gonna move on your string. And I just use a little tiny piece of duct tape, put it on my string at a quarter inch above the knocking point, shoot that first arrow, check how it's flying. How do you see how it's flying? Generally, your bare eye can see it, but if you have a hard time with that, you can have someone beside you look at it. All right, you watching? Yeah, I got you. Go for it. Yeah, I think that's a little off, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's change it. The third option, which may be the best option, is to set up your cell phone. Film yourself in the slowest motion your cell phone can do, and you can easily tune your arrows based upon that. If it's not flying true, raise it a little bit. I see most people set the knocking points below where they should. It's very easy to do. So I would goof high, because when you're too low, it's a mess. But you can move that duct tape around like, super easily in eighth inch increments and within five arrows you're gonna have a true flying arrow. At that point, mark your serving material with a sharpie and then tie your nail knot there. If you wanna know how to tie a nail knot, boom, check out the video. It, it's much better than the brass knuckles. Actually, I don't know what those are called. And that's how I fix my bad arrow flight when you're getting the seesawing motion. I hope this is beneficial for you today. If you want to know how to fix the fishtail, I'll cover that in the next video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Stay shatterproof. If you want to help me build a manufacturing archery company here in the United States, go check out Team Shatterproof. Just posted a new promo video there and I am launching many sweet things. I hope to see you there, but if not, I am still for you. I'll see you guys around. Stay shatterproof. How do you sign off of a video? Probably just cut it, just see ya.